Chronicles. I'm Matt Kathan. I'm Tamara Genter. And I'm Genevieve Camp. And this is our final Engineering 6 project. So our project is coupled pendulums, and it models the motion of two pendulums connected by a spring. We have the user select values such as the masses, the length of the axes, the distance between them, the spring constant, and the angles of the axes. So we're going to start by running the program. And we're going to enter our masses. And now it's going to ask for our initial values for theta. So we can either hit enter and it'll generate a random value, or we can make some. So we're going to do pi over 4 and pi over 3. And so there's our initial condition. So now we're going to go over to the code. So this is our main program, pendulumfinal.m. Let's start at the very top, shall we? So to start off, we've got our user inputs because, of course, we don't want the program to just run with the same numbers every single time. We want the user to have uh, some direct input to how the program operates. So with these inputs, the user can input any masses that he wants, any length between them, any distance to the masses from the axis, and any angles theta that he wants. Even spring constant is all variable here. Uh, as for theta, it's important to mention that we have a few limitations. Uh, first of all, it can only be between 0 and pi over 2, because if we increase the angle beyond pi over 2, then it, stuff starts to go haywire, and there's going to be too much acceleration going downwards, so the graph won't be as consistent. So we have a few if statements here to verify the value of theta. Uh, these two if statements are designed to basically check to see if theta 1 and theta 2 are in between are in between 0 and pi over 2, as I just exclaimed. Uh, if either one is less than 0 or greater than pi over 2, then an error message is going to come up and it'll, the user will be asked to input another value of theta 1 or theta 2. Uh, so that's good. It allows us to make sure that the user is actually getting uh, or inputting proper values. We also wanted to point out that we're using the absolute value of theta 1 and theta 2 uh, just in case the user wants to put in the negative value because, again, we don't want to limit our program. We want it to have as many uh, possibilities as we can for looking at the dynamics of the system. We also have this if statement right here which is designed in case the user doesn't want to input his own uh, numbers for theta 1 or theta 2. In the case that a user were to just write or just type enter uh, and skip typing in for theta 1 and theta 2, this if statement will check whether the user has done that. If they have, then theta 1 or theta 2 will be represented by an empty uh, matrix and this if statement will check if either one is empty. In which case, both theta1 and theta2 uh, will be replaced by a random number between 0 and 1 multiplied by pi over 2, so as to get a random value of theta. That way, uh, just in case the user happens to be a little bit lazier, he can still succeed in watching the glorious movie that is to come. Okay, so now we are going to go over to the graphing program. As you can see here, after it does the theta values, it goes to this program called graph, which has all of our inputs as inputs of the function. So let's go over to that. And here we have our figure, which we call figure 1, or figure i. And it plots based on arbitrary values. So for this one, it's just d. So our pivot points start at the point d, and 2d as the x values. And then the connecting bar is just a bar between those two. And then the rods are found using trigonometry. So the y value is d, the starting point, plus l times sine theta, and d minus l times cosine theta. So that plots the rods based on the angle that we input. And then the masses are just 
at the end of the rods. So we have the y values for those. And it's set so that the masses are circles with sizes that depend on M1 and the marker face is red. And then the spring starts and ends at the x values of the masses. And the sine curve frequency is programmed so that there are five coils in the spring. And then we have a legend that describes all the components of the graph. So now we're going to move on to the equation. OK, so we'll be discussing the differential equation. So basically, we're trying to find um, the time interval range for the di of the dynamics of the system. So we're basically using auxiliary values to um, manipulate the second derivative of data. And we already have our initial values of data 1 and data 2. So we also have the first derivative of the unmoving mass, which is 0. And then uh, after we have all the in uh, information given uh, earlier by the user, we can calculate the second derivative at time 0. Um, so we basically start by creating a loop a for loop where we take all the data and use it to calculate the first derivative at time t plus uh, dt, where uh, basically dt is the change in time per frame. Uh, so therefore, we use um, the first derivative would uh, thus use uh, similarity to calculate uh, theta 1 and theta 2, uh, and it will plot the second graph and the cycle for the from the for loop will just basically repeat until the time interval is ended based on what the user puts uh, thank you for watching our presentation of the code uh, as we conclude we'd like to show you the final uh, steps of our program when we run it not just the halfway point I want to show you our final results so let's jump into it shall we so it, to run our program, of course, in MATLAB, we just have to type pendulum final. Bam. So for first mass, I'm thinking 16, second mass 17, uh, length of the axis 15, spring constant 27, distances between the masses 20, and we'll do random thetas. So that's our initial graph, and let's see how it, that changes over 10 seconds, shall we? And there we have it, the rotating springs see how it flows very fluidly like the real setup would. Beautiful. There we go. Oh, legend. There's the legend. Yeah. Of course. Beautiful. We hope you enjoyed our presentation of our program and we'd like to wish you a good summer, a good evening. And thank you for watching. Goodbye. Farewell. I love you. <laughs> okay, we're good. Good? Good? Oh god. You so I'll just say something along the lines of, that's all, folks. And then that's we'll... our program and like, yeah, and stuff. That's our program <laughs> and like, yeah, and stuff. That's okay. how pretty much everyone ends there. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. Like, so like, yeah. And so like, yeah, yeah, totally. Like, oh my god, like, who wouldn't think that? Jeez. Haven't um, you always wondered what a pendulum does? No,